Now then, people, and welcome back to another episode of the Premier League Wrap. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, and what weekend of football it was in the Premier League as well. Arguably, on Sunday, that game between City and Chelsea is right up there in the annals of history of Premier League all-time games. It was an absolute barnstormer, and we will be discussing it at length. But before we do, you've got to like the video, you've got to subscribe to the channel, get your comments in. I'm going to be posing a few questions that I want you to answer in the comments as well. And of course, hit the notification bell. Just because it's the international break, it doesn't stop on the channel. I've got plenty, plenty planned. So, of course, make sure you've got your notification bell smashed. Let me remind you, of course, of my fantastic sponsors as well. We've got Cool Media Marketing, helping businesses get found, seen and chosen online. If you want to generate more business, more leads, then contact Cool Media for a free digital audit on already paid for methods of advertising through the likes of Facebook and Google, etc. The link to all the details are in the description. And of course, we need to talk Fantasy 5 as well. Big up to all yous who have signed up to Fantasy 5. The link is in the description. It's free for you to do so. And there is a £10,000 jackpot prize every week. Now, I had a much better week this week. Uh, Leandro Trossard, obviously, scoring more than his predicted 7.5 total. Others didn't do so well. The likes of Sinny... Uh, kudos and of course uh, João Pedro, I didn't pick Sini by the way, uh, he was put in by our very own Jure, uh, but Cole Palmer did uh, did well but not quite enough to, to outscore his points total, let me know your points total and remember for every correct prediction you do get entered into weekly, monthly, annual prizes. So you might not win the 10 grand jackpot, but there is still the opportunity to win prizes. And if you do sign up for the month of December, we're going to get it locked in and get a mini league running, which will have prizes to win throughout as well. So do me a solid, yourself a solid, and Fantasy 5 a solid, and make sure you sign up. Now, there is, of course, only one place we can start. Sunday, 4.30, the whole eyes of the world on this fixture uh, not least because it was the only decent game that was running at that time and what a game it was at Stamford Bridge four apiece have Chelsea and Pochettino finally turn that corner obviously a result against Arsenal beating Spurs and now getting a point against arguably the best team in world football. Nicholas Jackson scored, Raheem Sterling's cooking on gas. I took a bit of flack, actually, and had a debate with someone that Raheem didn't deserve an England call-up. Well, I'm starting to think, I, I, you know, I look silly now because he certainly did. Obviously, Cole Palmer has been called up since, as has Rico Lewis, and, and, and both call-ups are deserved based on the form this season. What that does as well for Calvin, he needs to start worrying because, you know, Pep's playing Rico Lewis sometimes ahead of Calvin, and if he's getting in the England call-up, then his minutes for England may also come scarce. So it's going to be interesting to see where Calvin goes in January. He must move. But look, what a game of football this was. Haaland getting on the score sheet twice, as he does. He's just a goal machine. And Rodri, Mr. Clutch himself, although he didn't have a great game, he's still a clutch player. Comes up on the 86th minute to make it 4-3. And you think that's that. But no, Cole Palmer... I always come back to it. There is stories in football. The coolness, the calm, the mental fortitude of him to go up against his old club and take that penalty. That's the kind of killer that you need. The lad's just 21 year old. The pressure on him and to dispatch it the way he does as well. He's a quality penalty taker, I can't lie. And will that be a signing that City will regret? I'd argue no, because it's clear now they've got one of the best academies in England and also they've got enough money to just go and buy 10 Cole Palmers if they want. But what a game of football, folks. Where does it rank for you in all-time Premier League thrillers? Now, from the last game of this game week, right back to the first game, obviously, Wolverhampton Wanderers beat Spurs 2-1 at home. With goals from Pablo Sarabia and Mario Lamina coming after the 90th minute. Brennan Johnson had put Spurs in front after three minutes. I'm really happy for Brennan Johnson. He's a top player and a top talent you know naturally when you're lower down the leagues or at the bottom end of the championship you're aware of these and sometimes I feel and we've seen it with Arsenal and Rice they disregard these players and not a lot of Spurs fans were actually excited by the signing so the fact he's coming into the side now starting ahead of a Richarlison for example who they paid a lot of money for and doing bits it, it, it's great to see but look the spoils went to Wolves that's two losses on the spin now for Spurs there was talk of Spurs being in a title race. And I said on a number of shows, they just don't have the squad depth. That Chelsea game's absolutely killed them. Losing Dorgie, Romero to suspensions. And Madison and Van der Ven, who basically transformed this Spurs side, are out till the new year. So ultimately, their squad just doesn't have the capabilities. So we don't have the capacity. <laughs> And it's going to be interesting to see come January if Ange gets what 
he needs from Daniel Levy. The jury's still out for me. But look, all praise to Gary O'Neill. What a job he is doing. I know Bournemouth have started to turn a corner now, but it, it makes you think, do they regret that decision? Because he's gone in at Wolves. I've seen his post-match thoughts with the players and stuff as well. He, for me, is an up-and-coming, exciting British coach, and it's great to see. And I, I was worried for Wolves. I thought they might get relegated at the start of the season. I definitely had them in the conversation, but the way that he's started with them, and we know Molyneux is a tough place to go anyway. It's, they've got a raucous crowd. They're a well-supported club. Uh, and I'm just over the moon for them and for Gary O'Neill, so fair play. Another team who we all considered probably... 90% of people thought would be down there in a relegation fight, of course, was Everton. And what a job Sean Dyche is doing. He's got them winning games of football now. He's got them playing to his specific brand. They're not having to rely on Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Three goals scored yesterday, all from different scorers. Mikalenko, Idrissa Garnagate and Abdoulaye Dukore. And for them to go to a Crystal Palace side that have started really well, have been great defensively. Joachim Anderson, Mark Guahy have had a great start to the season. For them to go there and win 3-2. And like I say, I keep coming back to it. Even if they get a points deduction, I think they're now at a point where even if they get a points deduction, they'll still be in the positives. So, like, Everton and Sean Dyche, fair play. Arsenal ran out 3-1 winners at home against Burnley. Standard procedure, really. Of course, they should be winning this game. And they did quite comfortably in the end. But you know me, I'm here to talk about Vinnie Company again. Again! I'm still not hearing any noises about this guy being in trouble. That's five consecutive defeats now for Burnley. And they're in 19th on just four points. I know it's early, but if they continue in this vein, they're going down. Now, two things happen for me. Either Vincent Company comes away from his principles and changes his style, needs must, but then again, am I being a hypocrite? Because I wouldn't expect Bielsa to do it. I wouldn't expect Ange to do it. I actually lauded him for the way that he went down swinging against Chelsea. But I think the reason I'm so like on top of it is because I'm sick of hearing about Sheffield United and Luton and all this and no chat of Burnley. Now, I did just say that Burnley are in 19th. Correction, they're actually in 20th. And the reason that is is because Sheffield United got their first point on the road. And on the face of it, it's a great point against Brighton. However, uncomfortable conversations time because every man and his dog's been going wild on De Zerbe, but Brighton now don't have a victory in six league matches. That's their longest winless run under De Zerbe. They're in eighth. Now I was hearing calls for De Zerbe to be the successor to Pep. Hmm, uncomfortable conversations. I'm not convinced. But it's all about the blades for me. I'm happy. Listen, I've got friends that are Sheffield United fans. I think fair play to the ownership for keeping faith with Paul Heckingbottom. They've now got five points on the board, closer to that magic number of 12 to ensure they don't break Derby's points record. And they're just four points behind Bournemouth now. Um, will they bridge that gap? I'm not too sure because Bournemouth seem to be going in the right direction because Bournemouth got a fantastic win at home against Newcastle United. Two Two goals for Solanke and a great three points to pick up against Newcastle. So are the Iriola methods finally getting across to the players? The jury is still out, but they're going in the right direction. Now another club you would say is going in the right direction is Newcastle. Champions League football, beating the likes of PSG at home, still in all the cup competitions. But according to some of their fans, that's not good enough. <laughs> Listen, I love the Geordies, I love the Newcastle fan base, but when they're calling out Trippier or the squad for a poor performance, considering how many injuries they've got. I mean, against Man United in the Carabao Cup, they played about nine fullbacks. They're fighting on all fronts. They're in the Champions League for the first time in like two decades. Yes, some of their fans are having to go up the squad and Trippier. I think it's a sense of entitlement that you go, calm down, calm down, because two seasons ago, you were nearly relegated. I'd imagine the die-hard Newcastle fans who were going away when they were getting pammed every week. I assume they're still like, yeah, we just can't believe we're here. And listen, that's the same for a club like Luton. Luton obviously went to Old Trafford. We're beating 1-0, uh, a goal from Victor Lindelof. But, you know, having heard and listened to them, they're just happy to be here. And I get it. But here's a bit of a mad one for you. It's sort of crept up on us. Man United are actually the most informed team in the league. In the last five games, they've won four. But don't let that fool you, folks. During that time, they got two injury time goals against Brentford. Beat Sheffield United 2-1. Fulham 1-0 to a late goal. And obviously beat Luton at home 1-0. Like, 
The fixtures have been favourable of late. Let's see what happens when it flips, when you've got some difficult games. And when I say difficult, I'm talking like Crystal Palace, West Ham. I'm not even talking the big boys, your Liverpools, your Cities, your Arsenals, even Chelsea at this point. So do not let these Man United fans gas it up. Ten Hag is still a massive bold fraud. Aston Villa continue to be imperious at home. It's their longest top flight winning streak at home since 1983. They're absolutely killing it. And what a job Unai Emery's done there. John McGinn's always been underrated for me. Obviously was linked to big clubs in the past. And Villa are a big club, by the way. But he just seems to have took his game to the next level. The flying and beat Fulham 3-1. Fulham now in 16th. Do Fulham need to look over the shoulder? Probably not, because I still think the three promoted teams are the three that go down. Liverpool, like Aston Villa, are just unreal at home. They've won all six of their home league games. Mo Salah got two goals, Tassimikas got two assists, and they're now above Tottenham and Arsenal. And for me, still look the team that will challenge City the most this season. And finally, just to finish at the London Stadium, West Ham beat Nottingham Forest 3-2 with the cheat code that is James Ward-Prowse getting back amongst the assist after a quiet few weeks. And West Ham needed that because, like I say, it was their first win in five now uh, in the Premier League. So, you know, as good as they've been in Europe, they need to sort that league form out because it won't be long before, you know... More questions are asked to David Moyes like it was last season. And look, not that Forrest will be asked, but it's just going to be one of them seasons for their mid-table obscurity. Win some, you lose some. What we'd have given for a season like that. We had an amazing season and then a terrible season. But that's where you are now in that sort of middle ground. Beat Villa the week before, then lose to West Ham. It's just one of them, isn't it? But listen, folks, thanks as always for watching. Really enjoyed doing this episode, as I always do. Watch out over the coming days. We've got some exciting videos coming to keep you ticking over during the international break and as i always say thanks as always for watching please do smash a like subscribe to the channel get your comments in, and of course hit that notification bell and i'll see you in a bit peace out now